Recording in progress. All right. So welcome to the Epic Graduation Stole um, pressing tutorial. I am Denisha Wright. I am the co-owner of Images of Ink and also the co-founder of Incredible Press Images Crafting, also known as Epic, where we refer to ourselves as the kinfolk. So today we are going to be pressing some graduation stoles using a new um, method that I like to use um, just recently. Um, and it allows me to press a 72 inch stole on a 16 by 20 press with just two presses versus the traditional four that I used to do. So um, the things that you are going to need for this tutorial is you're going to need your stole. Um, you can get the 72 inch or we also have the 60 inches. These can be found on our website. I will post those into the comments um, after this live. You're also going to need your transfers. Um, I do have a 36 inch printer, so I have my transfers cut out completely. If you need to piece yours together, you can also do that. If you need a template for the soles, they can be found in our Epic stash, which is located in our Facebook group. So, um, and it is a free template for you there. Um, you're going to need a pair of scissors, which I've already used to cut these. And then you are going to need some quilt basting spray or a basting spray of your choice. So I'm using the June Taylor, which was purchased at Walmart. You can get it at Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Target, you know, any of those places where you can get some basting spray. So we are going to jump right in. I know it's New Year's Eve and people are going to go out and have themselves a good time. So we're going to hop in and hop out of this live really, really quick. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my um, stole out of the packaging and I'm actually going to pre-press it because it is going to have a few creases in it and I want to make sure I get those creases out before I put it onto my image. So let me go ahead and pre-press this. I'm just over here, the press is over here on the side. I'll move it over here in a little bit once it's that time. So this is how the sole looks when you open it. And as you can see, there's like creases in there from it being folded for so long. So I'm just gonna press those creases out. and just about four to five seconds on each section to get the creases out. Nothing too major. All right, so there we go. So now that I've got the creases out, I am going to set up my image. And I'm going to take my image and I'm going to do it. I have a box over here to the side. I'm going to slightly mist it with the basting spray. You don't want to use a lot. You just want to put just enough so that way your stole won't shift. So I'm just going to do a light mist on both sides, going all, all the way up and all the way down. All right. so there we go. I lightly sprayed both sides. Leave this out flat. Now I'm going to grab my stole. So as you know, you can put this onto your image. So I'm going to lay down my first side, which is gonna be this side. And of course I have some bleed area because I wanted to go full edge to edge. So I made my print a little bit larger than my actual stole. The good thing about the basting spray is it is repositionable. It's not a permanent spray. So you can, if you need to pick it up and move it around a little bit, you can do that. So hopefully you guys can see me. 
adjusting that and I'm making sure I'm pulling it tight. And when I go to smooth it out, because it is satin and it will move, you just want to make sure there's no creases underneath. Okay. This ruler. Okay, so like right here, I can feel there's like a little crease. So I'm just gonna pick it up, make sure it's nice and smooth. Now, when I go to flip and do the other side, okay. So naturally, here's the top of my stole. I need this side is gonna be printed. So I need this bottom side to also be printed, okay. So I just fold down this top part a little bit to give me a little bit of room. And now I'm gonna go line this side up. And I like to start at the bottom because that's where some of my important information is. Like I said, the basing spray is repositionable. So you gotta have a little bit of grace. If it takes you too long to get it lined up, you can always go back and spray it again. So I'm trying to get this all the way to the bottom because I do have numbers down here at the bottom. And then I'm just gonna smooth it out. And then making sure, because I did do my, my name pretty big because I wanted it to go almost to the edge. So just making sure that my name hits all the way up, okay? And if I need to pick it up, move it over a little bit, I can do that as well. A little crease. Smooth it out. Okay. So now this top part, because this is going to be at the back of the neck, I'm not worried about this not getting printed. So I'm just going to fold it down and I'm going to move it up as much as I can. So that way, okay, that's that. But we want to keep it nice and clean, right? So let me make sure that's smooth. Yep. We want to keep it nice and clean. So you can take a piece of butcher paper or a piece of cardstock or whatever it is that you want to use. And we are going to put it into the middle. So I just have a piece of, I actually just grabbed a piece of copy paper because my butcher paper is at the shop and I don't want to cut a huge piece. And I'm just going to fold it in half and then fold it in half again because I just want to protect this inside area right here. Okay, so I want to just make sure that this piece right here does not get inked because it's laying right there on the inside. And I just folded it in half because one thin piece, it could still bleed through. I'm going to grab a piece of tape. I'm just reaching up under there where that little hole is and I'm taping it down so it doesn't move. And then I'm taping this piece down. To be sure that when I go to flip over my stole, it doesn't move as well. I'm just gonna take this to the paper because I'm gonna have to slide it because I remember I only have a 16 by 20. So I'm gonna need to move it to do a second press, okay? All right, y'all ready to move to the press? So let's go over here to the press. So I am working on a Hotronics Air Fusion. Um, for those of you that know, I hate doing multiple presses on this press because it does require me to use two hands, but we're gonna make it work. So. Or in this case, some large copy paper. And I do actually like this one because it is so long that I only have to do one piece. When I do it at the shop with regular butcher paper, I'll just change out the butcher paper once I slide it. Okay. So now here is my stole stuck to it because remember I put tape, I mean, I put basing spray. So again, that piece of tape just went right there in the middle. 
so that way it'll hold it down. I like to do my bottom part first. So I'm just gonna lay this on the press as far as as far up as I can get it, but still making sure that it's pressed on the ends. Again, this is a 16 by 20. I'm not even taking up the whole 16 inches. So I know that it will fit on a 15 by 15, as long as you put your two pieces close together. If you cannot um, print them side by side like this, because you only have a small printer, you can still lay them down side by side the same way, and then just use your basing spray and it'll stick together, if that makes sense. All right. Let's see. All right, so I am at 400 degrees and we are going to do 35 seconds with medium pressure. Okay. Let me check some questions. <clears throat> oh, thank you, BB. Yes, the templates are in the stash. Um, if you're in the group, I posted the link to the stash in the group. And you will look under graduation stole. Let me check Facebook for comments. What's up, Facebook fam? Man, the bus, the bus was blowing hard, Monique. <laughs> All right. Now, this part is already done. So you know that we have to overlap it just a little bit. So what I found on the 16 by 20 is I can now go sideways because for me, trying to push it going straight back, there's a piece, the back part of my press is going to be in the way. I could turn it all the way around and do it that way, but I just go sideways so I can move it as little as possible. And then I'm just making sure that my stole is on the press. And again, this, oh, that's hot. This is the 72 inch. So just this little piece right here is gonna be overlapped, which is perfect enough. So this is the part where it gets a little difficult because more of it is hanging off the edge. So gravity wants to pull it down. Normally with the press at the shop, I could just hold it. So I'm gonna have to use my base. And it's not wanting to work. There we go. And now I'm going to press both. Okay, so now we're going to do the other side. That little bit of overlap is going to make sure that I don't have that white line in the middle where there would have been a missed spot that was pressed. Yeah, I got the fan, no pizza timer today, but the pizza timer is easier because I don't have to use both hands to operate it. So I can kind of hold my stole in place and just pull it down. So actually, if I was doing a whole bunch of them with this one, I, no, I would have to have a helper to come over here and help me push it down or something. All right, so there's that. And now we're just gonna pull it off. Ooh, it's hot now. So. I'm gonna let it cool off just a little bit because I don't have any gloves here at the house. But let me grab that. There's our butcher paper. You can see the shape that it left. That's our blowout paper there. And I'm gonna lay the stove back out over here so y'all can see it. Boom, look at that. Okay. And there you go. Two presses on a 16 by 20 heat press. No seam. Colors are popping. The template worked perfect. Anything that's off, like anything that I wanted to be on there was on there, the 2023, the name. I knew some of the picture would be cut off, but that's exactly how I wanted it because I wanted it to look like it was going all the way to the edge. I knew part of the logo was gonna be that way. I designed it that way. I'm totally fine with that. 
If you don't like that way where it looks like they're getting cut off, when we do the design session, you'll just make sure that your design matches the correct measurements. Now, the back part. Before, I used to do this side first, take the whole thing, press this side two times, boom, flip it over, press this side two times, that was four presses. Okay, when you get into 100 stoles and you're doing four presses a piece, that's 400 presses. If I can cut it down to 200 presses, that means I can do twice as many. And it's also a lot faster because I don't have to tape it or spray it down, do those two presses and then come back and pre I taped it and sprayed it down all at the same time. So on the back side, this is the part that goes on the neck. Yes, this part is not sublimated, but I'm okay with that because it's still a nice clean cut off. This is gonna be behind their head. If it's a girl, her hair more than likely is gonna cover it. But even if it's a guy, it really doesn't matter. So here, this is the inside. I did miss a little bit. So I do have a little bit of cleanup right there. There's nothing I can do about it. And honestly, I don't think it's that bad. I'll just have to be more cautious when I'm taping down my inside paper to make sure I don't miss, but I'm okay with that. So let me put it on for you guys so you can see it. And this is more so about the placement and everything as well. So let me see. Because we don't want the design to go all the way up the sole because if it goes all the way up the sole, guess what? You won't be able to see it. Let me turn this light down. Oh, I can't turn that one down because I don't have the other light on. But the placement is perfect. Like you'll be able to see all of the elements when it's around their neck. Again, the part that was white is over here in the back. The color goes up enough. Um, if you are not comfortable with taping pieces together, then just do a 13 by 19 and only go up halfway. And that's totally fine as well. But look at that. Busting. The great thing, <clears throat> excuse me, the great thing about once you get your design set up, like I did this, I made eight of them. All I had to do was go swap out the names, drop in the pictures where the other ones are. Everything was right where I needed to be. So every single one that I do, is going to have the same measurements. And it's going to have the same look and the same feel. So I can put this one over the top of it and everything still falls. And look at that, almost identical. Because all I did, I went into the software, I switched out this picture, swapped out that picture. The bottom was the same, changed his name, changed the top name the bottom was the same. You have to make it work for you. If you have to do a hundred stoles, you're not designing a hundred different designs. Get you three, four, maybe five, depending on how saturated your market is, maybe five designs and they get to pick from those. If they want something custom, custom, they're gonna pay extra. If you want me to create you a whole new design, hold on, let me straighten this out. Look at that all of them falling in the same place. His name's a little bit shorter, but I just stretched out his name a little bit more so that way it still looked uniform. Okay, y'all wanna do another one? Let me check the questions. Yes, the design session is gonna be epic. Yes, it is. And I'm gonna try to get that scheduled here ASAP because I know people want that. And I know you guys are thinking like, oh, it's only January, it's only December, technically January in a couple hours. Um, but graduations, where did 2022 go? Like it is literally about to be 2023 and less than a few hours for some of us. Graduation season will be here. Our school actually just sent out, um, just posted on Instagram. Graduation is May 31st this year. So it's gonna be January, then Valentine's Day, and then boom, graduation will be here. But you need to get these out soon so that people know that you're gonna offer them. You can't wait until a week or two before graduation to say, hey, you wanna come buy this? Because people are already gonna be buying their graduation stuff. So let's go ahead and let's do another one. And I'm gonna show you just how quick Please do another one. I have a six. Oh, a 16 by 24. That's even better. That means you're going to press most of it on your first press. So let's go ahead and do another one. 
Um, all right, so first things first, I'm gonna take my soul out of the packaging and I'm gonna go pre-press out those wrinkles because I do not want those creases. If there's a crease in it, when you press it with the ink, that crease is gonna show up white. So you can kind of see it's kind of dark, but you can see those deep folds. That's because they've been stored in a folded position for so long. I'm just gonna go to the press and pre-press it. So three or four seconds, whatever it takes to just knock the wrinkles out, that's it. Nothing major, I'm not doing a whole full-time press. Just something to knock the wrinkles out. And I'm doing two presses because there's a fold in the middle and a fold at the end. And they both don't fit on the press at the same time, unfortunately. Well, there's three, because there's one at the very top as well. A 16 by 24, you might be able to do it in one press. All right, boom. So now, you can see there's my bottom. You see it, it's all smoothed out, that's all. It's not perfect, but there's no hard crease. All right, let me grab my image. Here is my image. And again, I'm just gonna go step away and do this over a box. Have yourself a designated area, a box, maybe some paper laid out, something when you do the basing spray, because if not, that residue will build up in your area wherever you're working and it'll be sticky and tacky and you don't want that. So let me go spray this. Okay, quick little burst, just three, two to three little bursts on each side, just enough to hold it down. Okay, so then you decide. <clears throat> when I first started, I would like put it around my neck so I can see. Like this is the way that it's gonna go on. So I know that I have to print both of these sides. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna lay this side down. Making sure that's lined up, everything is smooth. And once you do this a few times, you will get into a rhythm. Like yesterday, I had to force myself to stop so I can save some to do today. And then again, you're gonna flip this part down. And that way you know that you're, stole is going the right way. I like to go from bottom to the top because the bottom is where all my important stuff is. And then anything at the top that gets cut off, I'm fine with that. Because my design important elements don't go all the way to the very, very tip top. Right. Making sure it's smooth. Again, this spray is repositionable. So if you mess up, you can just pick it up. Move it around. If you feel a wrinkle, a crease, because it is satin, you can definitely tell, fix it. Because if you don't, there will be a void. Don't say like, oh, it's gonna be all right. When I put the heavy pressure on it, it'll knock it out. No, it won't. It will just make it deeper. And there will definitely be a white spot. Oh, there's just there. So there's that. Everything is nice and smooth. Nope. All right, there we go. I'm gonna take my copy paper. Again, I just use copy paper, fold it in half, fold it in half again to stick up in the middle part. Okay, so I'm just gonna slide this in there. And I'm really just trying to protect this from getting dirty. So, tape a little piece in there so it doesn't move. Just a little piece of tape, like you do not need much. You just don't want it to lift up. That's it. If I had thin tape here, I would be using thin tape, but I only have thick tape here because I was going to tumblers. Boom, there we go. Now we're going back to the heat press. Denisha or Ahmad is going to have to repin it. I thought I had saved it. 
Yes. Okay. So back to the heat press. The only good thing about the regular butcher paper is I have it on the, it has a cutter so I can just pull up a strip and go. But Again, because I use the basin spray, it's pretty much set. It's not going anywhere. But you don't want to put too much because you don't want your um, you don't want it to be tacky. So not too much basin spray, but just enough to hold it still. Okay. I might have cut my butcher paper just a little bit too short, but all right. We're all set there. Gravity is trying to do its thing. I'm gonna grab this. I was really trying to slide today. Again, this is where I like the, the manual press better because I can hold it with one hand and then put the press down with the other, but this press requires two hands. Again, I'm at 400 degrees. And I'm doing 35 to 40 seconds. Let me check the comments over here. Man, Strawberry, we told you to be ready. Yes, this will be saved and it's gonna go up on the YouTube page. So it will be up on the YouTube page because um, those that know, I lost my old Facebook page. So Facebook took all the videos with it. So now I just upload everything to YouTube. All right, there's that. And then again, like I said, I have a 16 by 20. So instead of like trying to turn the whole thing around, I just turn it sideways, wear gloves. Because the amount that's left is just perfect for this side. And I just slide it just until my sole is up here on the top. And then that little bit of overlap is all that I need to prevent a crease. Oh, look, it's staying by itself today. All right. Yes. Let us think. Any more questions? Any more questions? Will the template be available to purchase? Um, no, the template will not be available to purchase because the template is free in the group. So if you go find my post, I will highlight it again. I'll post it again afterwards um, so that way everyone can see it but you will get the template for the 60 inch and the 72 inch stole for free. They're the PDF version and a PNG version. So you should be able to use it in whatever software that you like. Now, if you wanna just pay for it, you can go on my website, it's $5, but I thought free was better. For the camp folks, it's free. Anybody outside the group, they gotta pay for it because clearly they're not in the group, they don't know about it. Boom, hold on. It's like static electricity, it won't let go. Look at it, it just keeps clinging back to the paper. Y'all see that? That's crazy. Look at that. Let me put it on so you have to see it. Again, great placement. just like the other, that's the other one's off, but same thing, same placement, right where it needs to be, boom. Not too high up, you can still see everything. I love the 72 inches for the guys, especially the taller guys. Um, like for me, I'm only 5'6", so I could probably do a 60 inch one and be fine. I don't mind the 72, but definitely like our basketball boys are a lot taller. So these 72s are great but they are hard to find because they sell out so fast. Like we do have some on the site right now, but I don't know how long they're gonna last because we sell out the 72s first and then everybody just goes to the 60s once there's no more 72s left. And then the 60s aren't bad. They're just about six inches shorter on each side. So they go about like right here. 
which is not bad, but if you can get your hands on these, they're a lot better. Um, I also like these because if you look at the shape, and I'll show you a 60 inch as well, they pretty much keep the same length or the same width thickness all the way down. It's like a true rectangle until you get to the point. On the 60s, it's like a taper. So it kind of goes skinny and then it goes back out wide, which is not a big deal because you don't design anything all the way up here anyways, but that's just something to be uh, just a note. So when you get them, that's just how the 60s are. Um, packaging these back up, I know that was a question. So let me see. Hold on, let me see if there's any other questions before I go on to that. Yeah, the 72s are definitely great, but I mean, I've done tons of 60s because between selling the blanks and actually making them, I've run out of the 70s as well, the 72s. So the 60s work the same material. They're very nice. The satin is great gives it that nice little shine. So how I would package this up, you have a couple options. Now that it has that crease in the middle right there, can you guys see that? Um, so before I would just do it like this and then just like fold it in half, fold it in half again, and then you can put it back into the packaging. But now that it has, because it made like a, its own personal little crease, you kind of just, fold it in like that, it almost does it on its own. Like it really does kind of fold into itself. And then you can kind of line it up there if you want to. And then depending on if you opened your bag nicely or if you just ripped it open, um, you can actually put it back in the bag that it came in. Some of them do have that little sticker on the front, like this one here. It tells you the length of it, 188 centimeters. That's the 72 inch. You can just put your own little personal sticker over that if you want. But then you just take it, slide it back into the package, just like that. Close out all the air. So basically what I'm saying is when you open these, if you plan on reusing the bag, be mindful of that and don't just like rip it open. And I did that one year, just rip all the bags open. It's like, oh dang, and had to buy more bags to put them in. If you plan on bagging them up and then just put it back in the bag, just like that. So boom, I can do that side where it's showing his picture or I can do this side where it's showing the logo. Um, the other items, so for them, our senior night is, I think the first week of February, but since I'm on vacation, I'm kind of like getting them out of the way early. So they're also getting, because we got to start building our bundles, right? So also with that, there's going to be, this isn't his, but it's just another kid, is this garden flag. And I'm gonna press one of those here in a sec. I did save two of those to press with you. So that way you guys can see. But this basically gets folded in half, gets folded in half again, just like that. And it goes back in this bag. So these actually come in a bag as well. So when you get ready to do these, make sure you keep the bag. Or the other option would be you can fold it all up together and put it into one plastic bag. That's also an option. So we're gonna fold that up like this. Boom. And then they are also getting a charger. Okay, so this is their senior pack. Um, my dilemma, which I could use your help. So I was thinking of either doing the cap box or the regular, who has done one of the graduation boxes where you like decorate the outside of it and then put in everything inside of there. I was thinking the cap box because it's more unique, but then I'm thinking if I get a lot of orders from other teams, like I'm not offering hat boxes for all of them. I only have eight seniors. Um, these are my boys, so I don't mind doing that extra work for them. 
but for if I were to get like the um softball team to be like oh we want you to do it for our seniors in the baseball team like I'm not making 100 caps I'm just not so I would want to do one of the boxes so those are two options that you can use um a third option is just to get a cute little gift bag and put it in there so this isn't the exact box that you would order I'm gonna have to find a link for it but like you could just like kind of put some tissue paper down in there or something put this down in there boom put that in there boom and then the custom box you would put like a you would print on like cardstock something custom on the front I probably would even use like whatever design I use for this and put it on the top boom there's their boxes so that way we can distinguish them if you noticed there's a theme this design and the design on the stoles with the background and everything, it's all the same. All I did was take my background. Um, I took my background and I fit it to each of my different templates and then rearrange if I need the words to go vertical, horizontal, but I didn't change the background. I didn't change the fonts. Like everything was basically copy and paste, resizing, moving it around. So that way it would be easy. And then once I made the first one, once I made the first garden flag, I just swapped out each kid. Once I made the first stole, I just swapped it out for each kid. Once I did the charger, I just swapped out the name for each kid. You have to make sure that you are using your time wisely. So you don't wanna recreate like all of them to be different. They're different because they have their name on it. They have their picture on it. It's their school, like whatever. It is. Even if you don't go all the way custom with like student name, student year, like all of that. If you're just doing 2023 and the Spartans logo, that is custom to their school. Nobody else is gonna have that unless you make it for them. So then when you go to another school, guess what? They're gonna get the same exact design. Now I'm gonna switch to colors. So now I'm doing West High. I'm gonna change out the Spartans. I'm gonna put a Viking and I'm gonna change the blue to green or yellow, simple. So let's see, any questions? I think do grab boxes only because if it leads to orders, you don't have to say no about, exactly. That's what I was thinking. That's exactly what I was thinking. So any other questions? I just have like two, oh, I said I was gonna do a flag. Yeah, hold on. Let me check to make sure Facebook doesn't have any questions. Hold on. Oh, wait, no, let me change this camera around. Oh, I love that about work smarter, not harder. Did you say you did this? Uh, these were done in Affinity. Oops, what happened to my camera? Hold on. Let me change my camera back. Okay, so any questions? The floor is open for questions. And I have both. So I'm looking at both cameras, the phone and the camera actually. No? Let me go through Facebook and make sure I didn't miss any. Yes, design and affinity. This is so quick and easy. Yes, it is so much easier than the way that I used to do it with the four presses. Can your design be used in Photoshop? Um, so sometimes I'm able to set the designs up to be usable in Photoshop. So it goes easier from Photoshop to affinity. Um, but once I start adding like all of the elements and the effects to it in, in Affinity, it doesn't transfer to Photoshop as well. 
So at that point, I feel like it's easier to just recreate it than to like sell a template that you still have to apply all the effects to anyways. I haven't figured out the best way to transfer over the effects to Affinity, I mean, to Photoshop. So normally if it's, if it's a design that has a lot of Affinity elements to it, I'll put on my website like Affinity Photo Only or Affinity Designer Only. But I do have some templates that I have been able to make work in Affinity and Photoshop, and those are on my website. This one I did not, um, but I think I think I can make this one for Affinity because mm -hmm. it doesn't have all of the effects are added to the text, and you add that once you uh, put it into once you design it and make it your own. So I will work on uploading this one to the website. Um, is let's see, I love it. You make it look so easy. Thank you, Cece. Is this being saved? I missed it. Yes, it is being saved. Um, it will be uploaded onto YouTube. No graduation will be here, but yes, graduation will be here soon. Monica, hopefully that redo was helpful for you. She said, I lost my shoe because I missed the first part. I told you would be at the bus stop, Strawberry. Will the template be available for purchase? Uh, where is the image you said was in the group? Oh, which image? Oh, in the stash. Oh, the the um the template for the stole. Yes, that's in the stash. When's the design session? So let me, I'm gonna schedule one. I'm gonna make an event. I gotta go make a um a thing in Canva so I can upload it, but I'm gonna schedule the event hopefully in the next day or two. Do you have a link for the bags what which bags the bags for the stoles and they come in the bag so if you just open them nicely and then put them back if the sticky part is gone i would just use a sticker to secure it closed but yeah they come the the stoles come inside of a bag already the the garden flags come in a bag already and the chargers come in a box yep yeah, that box. I got that box at Michael's, that glitter box. Um, I wouldn't offer those because that box is probably like $3. Like that's too expensive for just a box. I would get something definitely a little cheaper. Um, are you recording this? Yes, this is being recorded. Thank you, CC, for the website. So, oh, why won't I let me pin it? Oh, there it is. So the stoles, we do have the stoles on our website. We have the 16 or the 60 inches and the 72 inches. The chargers are also on our website and the garden flags are on our website. Um, along with that, we do have some graduation frames and some graduation uh, keychains. Now, I'm not saying you have to buy all of your blanks from us, but if you are going to be purchasing graduation blanks, you need to get them early because people will sell out and most people, once they've stocked their graduation blanks and they sell out, unless it's super early, like coming up now, January, February, most don't restock because we don't want to be stuck with 2023 graduation stuff. Um, I do have some leftover from last year. My new shipment is going to be coming in here shortly. But right now there are some like the stoles, those are playing, the, the garden flags are playing. They don't have any 2023 written on them, but like those grad frames that say 2023, if you want those, you got to get them early because once people sell out, they typically don't restock because they don't want to be left with them because after graduation season is over, I mean, you can do a few more things with them for the rest of the year, but after, other than that, it's not much you can do with them. And even if they don't say 2023 and it just says grad, like nobody wants to sit on blanks for a whole year if they don't have to. Like if I know I'm going to sell hundred, I might order 150 and then hopefully I get those other 50 off but I'm not gonna order 500 knowing I'm probably only gonna sell 100 and just wait until next year and be stuck with 400 of them. Like that's not gonna be cost effective because now the money that I made, I gotta wait till next year to actually make a profit. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm gonna pause the recording.